Somehow we're pulling 1,123 megabits per second down. Dynalink. I can't say I've ever heard of them, but they do have some very affordable options when it comes to getting Wi-Fi 6 into your household. I mean, to be honest, this is the only option that they have when it comes to getting any kind of Wi-Fi into your household, but it checks a lot of boxes, and the price, it just sounds too good to be true. But as you know, I'm the perfect guy to check it out because, you know, I love a good deal. So first of all, the reason that this is a little bit sus to me is because up until like this week, their website hasn't been working. It says coming soon and all that good stuff. And now the website appears to be working and they have some new products coming soon, but this one's already available and ready to go. And we got it right here. And the packaging, it actually looks very good. It looks like they made this very easy to set up because all you need is a modem with internet connection and a smartphone. As far as features go, we have coverage up to 4,800 square feet, so it should be able to blanket an entire small and medium sized house with Wi-Fi 6 coverage. WPA3, which is the latest in Wi-Fi security, it is dual band with 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. We have up to 3,600 megabits per second Wi-Fi speed combined between the two bands. You can connect up to 200 devices, which is great when you have a lot of smart devices all around your house. We have four air gain smart antennas embedded inside. I mean, just looking at the design of this thing, it looks very nice when it comes to Wi-Fi routers because usually Wi-Fi routers have antennas protruding everywhere and it just looks like an eyesore. This right here, it'll just blend in and it's easy to hide. So as you can see, we're looking at wireless with 3,600 megabits per second combined with 1,200 megabits on 2.4 gigahertz and 24,000, there it is, typo. It means 2,400 megabits per second with eight stream connectivity. Yeah, that's a lot of streams. We have 4x4 Moo Mimo OFDMA 1024 QAM BSS coloring WPA3 IPv6. We have four gigabit LAN ports along with one 2.5 gigabit WAN port. Supports protocols 802.11ax and it's backwards compatible to all the ones before it. I'm really hoping this is as good and as easy as it's making it seem because if that's true, this right here might actually be my new router. Welcome, let's get started. See more in the back. All right, so right here on the back, we actually have all the information that we need about the actual device, including what each color status means for the LED light. And really, I'm loving how simplistic everything is looking so far. Oh, wow, here's the router itself. Huh, looks very nice. Also inside the box, we have a flat Cat 6A ethernet cable, a power cable, and that's it. Like, seriously, this is like the most simplistic router I've ever had. Let me just. Now, come to think of it, I've never actually had a white router or a white modem ever in life. They're always black, so this is all new to me, and it, it's just kind of mind-boggling. But wow, it really does look nice. Although, granted, it is a little bit bigger than I was expecting. I'm not sure why. I thought it was going to be round, and I thought it was going to be a little bit smaller. But, you know, it still looks good. Now, really, it just came with the router, an Ethernet cable, and a power adapter, all in white. I'm loving this, so clean, so simple. Now taking a look at the actual router itself, we have that nice simple matte white design with some light branding on the front along with the LED light that lets you know everything that's going on. Down on the bottom we actually have some vents so the heat can dissipate. And over on the back is where all the magic happens. We have the power port over here on the left side along with the reset button and a USB port so you can plug in a hard drive or a printer. We have the 2.5 gigabit per second port for your internet connection along with 4 gigabit ethernet ports for a direct connection to the internet. Then right here on top we have the WPS button so you can easily add devices to your network. And really that is it. It's a very simple design and seriously I'm liking this. If this little amazing looking device can actually cover 4,800 square feet with Wi-Fi 6 at fast speeds, I'm gonna be impressed. So with that being said, I'm gonna get this plugged into the modem, get some power in it, and then I'll come back and we'll go through the app and see if it's really as easy as they say to set it up. And just like that, I got it plugged in. It was very simple, literally plugging in two cables, one to the power, one to the modem, and it's got the light on solid blue, which means everything should be working. So next what we're gonna have to do is go into the app store, download the Dynalink app, because that's what we're gonna need. And apparently it's gonna be really easy to use and set up the router. So first things first, you're gonna need to sign up and make an account, verify your email, do all that good stuff. But once you're done giving them all your information, we're gonna get started and complete the setup in a few easy steps. Dynalink, power adapter, ethernet cable, modem. Just like I said, we're already done. Get started, unplug your modem and disconnect all the devices to it. I don't think we really have to. Connect the router, connected, 
Join the router's network, enable camera access, and scan the code underneath the router to set up quicker. So we're gonna enable camera access, scan the QR code on the bottom of the router, it's gonna give it the SSID and the default password. We're gonna confirm that we wanna to connect to it. It's gonna detect the router and instantly it detected it. We're gonna set up our internet connection. It'll obviously vary depending on what connection you're using. And now we can create our Wi-Fi network. Very nice. So by default, we're connected to the 2.4 gigahertz network. Obviously, we're not gonna wanna stay like that, but for right now, for setup process, why not? It doesn't really matter. So we can choose our network name and our password. So this is the default one. I'll just leave it like that for now. But obviously, if you already have a Wi-Fi network in your house and all your devices are connected to it, you wanna use the same name and password that you're already using. That way, all your devices will connect to the new router without you having to do anything. Because if you have a bunch of smart devices, you do not wanna to go to each and every one of them and reprogram that thing. It's annoying, it takes a lot of time. So let's not do that. But right now, we'll just leave it at this for now. Five gigahertz network as well five gigahertz network as well. And remember, you can always change this later if you want to. So create network. And now, this is actually pretty cool, although I've never actually thought, hey, I wish I could use Google to control my router. Although I guess if you really wanna turn your guest network on and off, depending on if guests are over or not, you could do that. But for me personally, I don't think I would ever use it, but let's turn it on. But seriously, hey, turn on the guest network. What? Congratulations, Dynalink Wi-Fi 6 router is now up and running. Hmm, that was literally like a minute, so very cool. So enjoy network. Update available, we have an update, okay, nice. So let's install the update. Looks like it's gonna take about 100 seconds for it to update, so that's cool. Let's just wait. Update's complete, very nice, press okay. Our network is online, connected devices one, Parental control zero, quality of service is off. So let's see, we have quality of service, you can turn that on and off. To be honest, I'll just leave it off usually unless you really need to tweak things. Parental controls, you can add new profiles so you can choose, mm, you can have it actually pause the internet connection for certain family members and all that stuff. So that's pretty cool if you wanna do that, but I'll do that over here. Connected devices, we can see everything that's connected. So right here, this is my iPhone that's connected to the 2.4 gigahertz network. Although, you know what? I just switched over to the five gigahertz network and instantly it just shows me right here. It even, really? It even shows the signal that my device has from the router. So I can see how strong the signal is for every device that's connected to the router. That's actually really cool. You can also go over to the LAN tab and see what's actually connected directly into it with an ethernet cable. Right now we have nothing. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Although it's not showing the name of the device, which I don't like, I would really prefer if it said it. Now you could change the name, although I don't wanna go through it. Usually it pops up by itself, so hopefully that'll change in the future. And now I don't know why there's something connected to the 2.4 gigahertz, it's just me. Why are there three devices? What's going on here? Am I being hacked? Let's see, over here on the top left, we have a little menu. You can go to settings. We have the LED light, we could turn that on and off. Firmware update and factory reset, very simple. Down here on the bottom, we have a Wi-Fi symbol. And here we go, we have band steering, which will intelligently direct your devices to either network for the best performance, and you will only have one network name and password. I tried that before, and for some reason, it always connected me to the 2.4 gigahertz network, and I didn't like that, so, you know, I'm gonna just manually do that myself. You can change your network names and passwords right here, and then also go over to your guest Wi-Fi settings, turn that on and off, and also pick the different networks. But, as you can see, there's not really much in here. That's really as basic as it gets. Now it's back to one device, which is actually what it should be. But we are connected, so that's cool. Now, I do have two out of three bars on the iPhone's Wi-Fi signal strength, which is a little lower than I was expecting, considering it's supposed to cover 40, 100 square feet. Now, granted, it's going through walls, but I'm not really that far away. Maybe 2,000 feet away, maybe? So that's definitely within, and I mean, I guess that is about half, so I guess it's good enough. And to be fair, it's connected to the five gigahertz network, which isn't as strong as the 2.4 gigahertz network, so maybe that's what it's based on. But let's see how fast my connection is on the five gigahertz network, even though I only have, you know, a moderate signal. Okay, 11 millisecond ping, and okay, not bad. Went up to about 170 megabits per second for the download, evened out at about 156. Now the upload, come on, come on, keep going. Okay, come on, come on, 
upload we're about maxed out so the download speed I'm paying for is one gigabit upload speed 35 I know I hate it but that's as good as it gets thank you but it looks like we were you know pretty good as far as Wi-Fi goes this is probably about what I would normally get way over here anyways but the upload speed is usually maxed out so let's try that once more okay this time a seven millisecond ping so that's better although the download speed is slower Although, you know, to be fair, for most instances of using the internet, this is definitely fast enough. And plus, I don't have a full signal anyway, so keep that in mind. Although, usually on every other router, the upload speed is always maxed out because, you know, it's not that fast. It's 35. Although, you know what? Not bad. But I'm actually curious. How fast is it if I'm actually right next to the router? So standing in the room right next to the router, I'm pulling a 9 millisecond ping, and wow, there we go. There we go about 600 megabits per second down that's very nice okay there we go 610 megabits per second down and it looks like we passed 35 megabits per second which always happens and then we drop back down to 35 so we're pulling the max upload speed and a very decent download speed when we're right next to it in the same room but i am kind of curious because the 2.4 gigahertz signal goes further let's see how fast that one actually is we have full bars way over here and we're pulling 12 millisecond ping and 55, 56. You know, it's good enough for, you know, the average consumer to just watch Netflix or something, but that's, and you know, it's 2.4 gigahertz. It's, it is what it is, I guess, but that's really low. Cause I don't know, it should, I feel like it should be at least a hundred, right? Maybe. But we are maxing out the upload speed, so that's always good. Although, standing in the room with the router on 2.4 gigahertz, we're pulling less. Hmm, we got 11 millisecond ping and we're in the 40s, dropping down. It's, you know, it's, it is. Upload speed is maxed out though. It's kind of weird, it's kind of inconsistent. And you know, if you want to hardwire into the ethernet port, we have a 9 millisecond ping and a 925 megabit per second download speed, along with the maxed out 35 megabit per second upload speed. Very nice. But then when it comes to Xbox, somehow we're pulling 1,123 megabits per second down and a maxed out 35 megabits per second up. I'm not sure how we passed a gigabit, but I'll take it, I'll take it. So with all that being said, it looks like this router so far is so good. I mean, the price is right. It looks very nice. I mean, if I got to pick a router based on the look, I mean, obviously you should do function over form, but somehow this one is functioning a lot better than the Netgear that I was using up until right now. You can check out that video right here. But I'm impressed so far. I'm using this one router, no extenders, no mesh setup, nothing. And I'm pulling a gigabit, you know, directly in the ethernet and 600 if you're close enough and way over here where the other one didn't even reach close to me. Like I had to walk outside the door for it to touch me with a signal without the extender. This one right here, I'm still pulling 200 megabits per second down, which is good enough. So, so far I could definitely recommend this router. I mean, really it's cheap and it looks good and it's working. Now the app, it's very basic. You're going to want to go into the web UI if you want to be changing a bunch of different settings, but you know what? It's really easy to set up. It took less than a minute and it's working very well so far. I'm really impressed. And if you guys picked one up, let me know how you guys are liking it.